Bro, I'm not even joking, like in the process of recording this video, Sony just removed Cyberpunk 2077 from PSN for purchase. You cannot buy this game anymore on the PlayStation 4, and people are really out here claiming that this game was ready to release. So for all the people that were about to hate on me for my opinion in this video, you might want to rethink it. You already know the response to this video from Reddit in particular is going to be absolutely fantastic. But what's up, guys? I hope you all are having a great day today. We are going to be talking about none other than Cyberpunk. 2077. Now, this is a game that personally I was looking forward to originally, but delay after delay kind of killed my hype for it, and when we got really close up to launch, I remember the game went gold, which if you don't know what going gold means, it's literally like the game is in a finished enough state that they can begin printing the discs and sending them out to retailers. Yes, there still will be a day one patch. The game is not 100% done, but for the most part, it's like 99% done. You're talking like minor tweaks and fixes, which if you look at the game now, you'll see it's not just minor tweaks and fixes, especially on the last generation consoles, but I made a community post at the time when they made this announcement, and then a couple days later, decided they were going to delay the game once again, and I said, you know what, this is looking kind of spooky, like there is something really going on here, I feel like, with this game, and I cannot tell you how many comments I got on that community post of people telling me to have faith, everything was going to be okay, it's not a big deal, they're just making sure the minor bugs and glitches aren't going to be there day one, so that they'll release a perfect product, and as we saw, man, that is not even close to what we got. But... Now, I just want to make it abundantly clear for some of the low IQ motherfuckers out there that can't understand that you can criticize something without saying that it's bad. I am not saying that Cyberpunk is a bad game. I haven't played it for myself. I cannot pass judgment on it. I have no idea. I know quite a few people in real life that have played the game on PC and they thoroughly enjoyed it. So I'm not here to say that the game is dog shit. I'm not here to say it's one of the greatest video games of all time because I haven't played it for myself. So I'm not going to have an opinion on that. What I mainly want to talk about here are the reviews of the game and then on top of that, the corresponding apology, quote-unquote, from CD Projekt Red after this entire thing blew up in their face, and they realized that, you know, saying we developed The Witcher 3 was not a valid excuse for releasing a completely broken game on the last generation consoles. Which, keep in mind, that for the majority of Cyberpunk's eight years of development were the only consoles that this game was planned to come out on, so keep that in the back of your mind as well, as you think to yourself, well, it's just too advanced to run on last generation hardware. This game's been in development for eight years. It's not that advanced. But anyway, you know, this is where I want to go ahead and get into to the reviews here because Jesus Christ, man, I have never seen anything like this in modern memory when it comes to a video game. Like, I don't even think Bethesda or EA would go to this fucking level. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. Now, like I said previously, I have never seen a modern example of a company doing so much to prevent people from getting information on this game from reviews just a couple days before launch. Like, just for some more context here, a grand total of zero copies of this game were handed out for review on the consoles, whether they be last generation, next generation, PlayStation, or Xbox. No console reviews were there before launch. No one was given a key early in order to review those games. You had to wait until the game went live, basically to the point where you've already preloaded the game and chances are you've probably already started it, meaning you wouldn't be able to get a digital refund from Microsoft or Sony for your pre-order isn't that convenient. But I mean, that should already be the biggest fucking red flag right there. They are not giving out console review keys. So obviously, they're trying to hide something about the console version of the game. And when you look at the final console version of the game, you can understand why. It's a complete fucking train wreck. But to make it even worse, if you even happen to get the game early, let's say you're copy got shipped early through Amazon or whatever, if you played the game, took a screenshot of it, and posted it on Twitter, guess what would happen? You would get a DMCA takedown because CD Projekt Red would go to that level to prevent any sort of representation of the console version of this game being posted online. That is a fucking massive red flag. I think the only case I can remember something similar in terms of DMCA takedowns was Sony with The Last of Us 2, and when you look at the story of that game, you can fucking understand why. But you know, going back to the reviews of Cyberpunk, 
Cyberpunk 2077. It gets even worse on top of that. It doesn't even stop there because guess what happens if you did happen to get a review code for the game on PC, which is the only platform you could actually review the game on. In making your review, you were not allowed to record any of your own gameplay footage to include in that review. You were only permitted to use pre-released trailer footage that had been cherry-picked by CD Projekt Red. And when you look at the final state of the game that released, especially on the last generation consoles, you can fucking understand why it is so convenient that they wanted to make sure that no one got to see this game in its final form until after you've already popped the plastic on your physical copy or you've already downloaded and played your digital copy so you cannot cancel your digital pre-order. It's almost like they planned this entire fucking thing out for this exact reason. I mean, this, if any other company had attempted to do this, would be the fucking gaming controversy of the decade. But because, you know, CD Projekt Red developed one good game in their entire history, you know, The Witcher 3, we're gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. Like, I cannot tell you how many people on this platform, YouTube in particular, that railed on games like Fallout 76. They railed on games like Anthem, which, by the way, I'm not even defending here. I just think it's really funny because if you look at those two games in particular, despite the fact that they were broken, buggy, boring pieces of shit, they were a million times more transparent than CD Projekt Red has ever been with Cyberpunk 2077. Just for some more context, to throw some more fucking gasoline on this entire dumpster fire that is the review process of Cyberpunk 2077, Fallout 76 had a public open beta for everyone to try out the game before they bought it. They could play it, they could see how it ran on their console, and guess what? Everybody figured out the game was a buggy, broken pile of shit. So big shock, when it released, it was the exact same. Same thing with Anthem. We actually got to play the game, we got to see how it ran. It ran like complete dog shit, big surprise. The full release of the game was no different. Cyberpunk 2077, you could not even get a review on the console that you were planning on buying this game for until after you could not cancel your digital pre-order. I just want you to let that sink in, because honestly, I never thought I would see the day where I was saying that Fallout 76 and Anthem handled their review process and the information that they released to customers before release better than CD Projekt Red did with Cyberpunk 2077 because up until a couple weeks ago, they were like considered the good guys of the video game industry. They could basically do no wrong. They were like the complete opposite of what we thought of when we thought of companies like EA, Activision, Bethesda, for example. But now it's just like, you know, the veil has been lifted. They're just like every other multi-billion dollar company out there. And you know, I know people will point to, oh, well, they're offering refunds. Well, do you think they're doing that out of the kindness of their hearts? Fuck no. They're doing it so they don't get hit with a class class action lawsuit. Use your fucking brain. <laughs> but anyway, you know, that's beside the point, man. But the most amazing part to me is these so-called consumer advocates on YouTube that, you know, for countless hours called out Bethesda, they called out EA for Fallout 76 and Anthem, and rightfully so. Those games deserve to be called out. But now, you know, they're willing to give a company like CD Projekt Red the benefit of the doubt, even though they knowingly and willfully released a completely broken game onto the last generation consoles, and we're just supposed to sit by and trust that they will fix the entire situation for us. You know, it's absolutely amazing to me, but it comes as no surprise, dude. On YouTube, it never fails that YouTubers just cannot keep that same energy. So now that we covered the review process of Cyberpunk 77, I want to move on five days into the future to December 14th, 2020, to when Cyberpunk 2077's official Twitter account put out an apology from CD Projekt Red, basically apologizing for the game running like complete horseshit on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox. Xbox One consoles. Now, I find it very sad that people are believing this apology because literally these are the same motherfuckers that sat there and saw the game in its current state and said, you know what? This is ready to put out to the public. Like, Jesus Christ, people are so fucking gullible. But I want to go ahead and read through this because it is absolutely pathetic. Now, it starts off and says, Dear Gamers, Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at all my gamers. Oh yeah, what's up gamers? Oh. Now let me try to read this with a straight face. First of all, we would like to start by apologizing to you for not showing the game on base last gen consoles before it premiered, and in consequence, not allowing you to make a more informed decision about your purchase, AKA, you know, in the entire span of an eight year development cycle, seven of which this game was only planned to release on the last generation consoles, we made the deliberate decision to not once show gameplay running on the base last generation consoles, and on top of that, 
had went even further to prevent any reviews of this game coming out for those consoles as well, so you would not have any information whatsoever about how this game performed because we knew it was a buggy, broken, unfinished game that had no right to come out. But you know what? We wanted your money anyway. That's how that should really be read. But anyway, let's continue on. We should have paid more attention to making it play better on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. So you're telling me you did not pay attention enough to the primary platforms that people are going to be buying this game on because I can guarantee you the overwhelming majority of people who are playing Cyberpunk 2077 are doing so on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. There is 160 million of those consoles combined out there and you're trying to tell me that you didn't pay enough attention to the development of this game on those platforms for which seven of the years that this game was in development, those were the primary consoles that this game was coming out for in conjunction with PC and you're telling me you did not pay attention enough to those versions of the games. That's what I mean. Like, I don't know how anyone is taking this quote unquote apology at face value when these are the same motherfuckers that deem this game ready to come out. Second, we will fix bugs and crashes and improve the overall experience. The first round of updates has just been released and the next one is coming within the next seven days. Expect more as we will update frequently whenever new improvements are ready. After the holidays, we'll continue working. We'll release two large patches starting with patch one in January and this will be followed by patch two in February. So basically, this game should have been delayed on the last generation consoles until at least February. But no, you've got to push it out because you need to get those 8 million pre-orders on your quarter four financials for fiscal year 2020. That's the real motivator here. They were trying to get their stock price up, which a lot of good that did because your stock price dropped like over 33% as a result of the launch of this game. So, you know, well played right there. I hope it was really worth it. But instead of just delaying the game and releasing it when it was actually functioning, maybe just pushing back the last generation console versions because they clearly were not ready. And you're basically saying they won't be ready until at least February of 2021. And that's if everything goes according to plan and you can actually get those patches out in time, which, you know, judging by the development cycle of this game to begin with, that's very fucking unlikely. So that's what I mean. These are the same people who deem this game ready to release to the public and they're sitting here telling you to have faith. They will fix it. You know, we are sorry. We never planned for this to happen. Bull fucking shit. Together, these should fix the most prominent problems gamers are facing on last gen consoles. We will be informing you about the contents of each patch ahead of their release. They won't make the game on last gen look like it's running on a high spec PC or an next gen console. No shit. But it will be closer to that experience than it is now. Hopefully it'll be playable too. You know, it won't be running at 15 frames per second at certain times. Finally, we would always like everyone who buys our games to be satisfied with their purchase. We would appreciate it if you would give us a chance, but if you're not pleased with the game on your console and don't want to wait for the updates, you can opt to refund your copy. For copies purchased digitally, please use the refund systems of PSN or Xbox respectively, which PSN does not have a refund system. They just now actually implemented a method for you to refund Cyberpunk 2077 as I'm literally recording this video, like I mentioned at the beginning, like we're just getting some breaking news here. So that's kind of funny, but yeah. Also in addition for boxed versions, please first try to get a refund at the store where you bought the game. Should this not be possible, please contact, you know, here's the email address if you want to contact them and we will do our best to help you. Starting from today, you can contact us for a week up until December 21st, 2020. So basically if you bought the game and you can't email us by then, you know, you're kind of shit out of luck. But anyway, guys, you know, I just really wanted to cover this because I felt like people were going way too soft on CD Projekt Red, because if this was any other company, it would be a completely different story for most people out there. But because it's CD Projekt Red, people are giving them the benefit of the doubt. But in my opinion, the evidence is just too insurmountable that this was deliberate. It's too calculated. They went out of their way to deceive people and made sure people were as uninformed as possible when they went out and purchased this game. And that to me is unfucking excusable. And I'm gonna call that shit out, man. Like, I don't really give a shit. You know, Redditors from r slash gaming, because you already know this video is gonna end up there, you know, feel free to hit that dislike button. And if that makes you feel better about yourselves, go for it. I just felt like this needed to be said. You know, I'm not typically one of those people that's like, Mr. Oh my God, I'm such a big consumer advocate or whatever. But in this particular case, there's just way too much bullshit surrounding this entire situation to not be called out. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video or agreed with anything I said in it, make sure to hit that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. Pretty fucking crazy though. Like in the process of making this video, like I'm not even joking. It's 821 right now. And I think at like 8 p.m. it came out that Sony was basically saying that we will not be listing this game anymore on PSN. 
again. So absolutely crazy. This situation is evolving constantly. Pretty fucking insane. I never thought we'd be in the situation where, you know, Cyberpunk 2077 from CD Projekt Red of all people is like this big issue of controversy in the gaming industry. But you know what, man? 2020 has been nothing but absolutely fucking insane. So who even knows at this point? We still got a couple weeks left. So fingers crossed we make it through this shit. But anyway, guys, as always, I want to thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well. Like you guys have been absolutely fucking insane with the support on this channel. Like this year, I know the meme is like, oh, 2020 bad. But in general for my channel, 2020 has been a great year. And I really just can't thank you guys enough for that. So thank you all so much for all the support on this channel and for or the support on the live streams as well. Like I just started streaming on YouTube and it's been a lot of fun, man. So I really just can't thank you guys enough for all the support. It really does mean the world. And with that sappy shit out of the way, I will catch you guys next time.